Good evening. As a preliminary matter, this is Douglas Heim, Town Council. Welcome to the April 12, 2021 meeting of the Arlington Select Board. Shortly after tonight's meeting begins, the Select Board will be electing a new chair and vice chair for their business year, following the April 10, 2021 election. But until then, I will procedurally serve as chair pro temp. On behalf of the town, a heartfelt thank you to all the candidates who campaigned for elective office. Permit me to confirm that all members and staff anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me for the meeting. Select board members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan. Affirmative. Steve DeCourcy. Yes. John Hurd. Yes. Len Diggins. Yes. Eric Helmuth. Yes. And staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine. Yes. And uh, I'll note that uh, Ashley Marr, uh, Select Board Administrator, is uh, recording minutes from the Select Board office. Um, as an additional matter, there is a, a slight uh, a Zoom double booking, if you will, tonight. So uh, apologies to folks who may have been uh, pre-registered under an old Zoom link. Anybody who wishes to follow along with or join the meeting can find the uh, new Zoom link on the Select Board Agendas and Minutes uh, page or the town calendar on the town's website. The town manager is also working to send an updated invitation to folks who pre-register. Finally, you may notice that my uh, name, my screen name is listed as legal department and I believe the town manager is listed as town meeting. Uh, the settings on this Zoom are a little bit different so as to uh, be calibrated correctly for town meeting. And that's why um, it's uh, difficult for us to change our names, but uh, hopefully folks can see our faces and recognize us. Uh, permit me to provide a brief introduction uh, to the meeting and set forth some ground rules. This is an open meeting of the Arlington Select Board being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth uh, due to the coronavirus pandemic. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded, so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not require ensuring public participation unless there is a public hearing item on the agenda or other provision for public comment, such as residents open forum. This meeting will not feature opportunities for public comment. An additional advisory is that the select board is convening by Zoom as uh, posted on the website identifying how the public may join. While the public may join this meeting either by the Zoom app or using their telephone dial-in number, it's also being broadcast on ACMI. Please note that the meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that anything broadcasted may be captured on the recording. Similarly, to the extent that you can, please also take care to adjust your screen and device name if you'd like to speak. In order for us to recognize speakers appropriately and develop accurate minutes, it's helpful for participants to see your full, and full first and last name when calling upon you rather than a nickname. Finally, all participants advise that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons who are not required to identify themselves. All the meetings uh, materials uh, for tonight's meeting are available on the Nova, Novus Agenda dashboard and the board's webpage. We recommend that members of the public follow the agenda as posted on Novus unless otherwise noted. Now we're gonna to turn to the first item on the agenda, which is the organizational meeting to elect the chair and vice chair. But before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of business and ensuring accurate meeting minutes. The chair, um, myself for the organizational piece and then whoever's elected the chair for the rest of the meeting will introduce each, each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude the remarks, the chair will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motion. <clears throat> Please hold until your name is called, which is helpful for those persons who are attending the meeting by telephone. Further, Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. And please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response further, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you. Finally, each vote in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. And with that, uh, we'll begin uh, the organizational part of the meeting. Um, 
I would uh, please take a motion to open motions for select, uh, open nominations for select board chair. So moved. Second. On a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Is there any discussion, a further discussion on opening nominations? Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmet? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Nominations are now open for chair of the select board for the 2021 year. Attorney Heim? Our Chairman Heim? Yes, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to nominate um, Mr. Steve DeCourcy as chair. We have a nomination from Mrs. Mahan for Stephen DeCourcy as chair of the select board for 2021 year. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Hurd. At this point, are there any further nominations for chair of the select board for 2021? Um, uh, I'd like to move to close nominations for chair. On a motion to close uh, nominations by Mrs. Mahan, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Hurd. I'll conduct a roll call vote. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Nominations are now closed. I know it seems a little bit silly, but now we'll vote on the nomination of Stephen DeCourcy to serve as chair. That being the only nomination, I will uh, simply conduct a roll call vote. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Congratulations, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you very much. Uh, then briefly, uh, do I have a motion to open um, nominations for vice chair? So, moved. so second. Moved by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Is there any further discussion by any members? Uh, on a motion to open nominations, Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Nominations are now open. Grant Hyman, I'd like to make a motion to nominate Diane Mahan as vice chair. Motion by Mr. Hurd to nominate Diane Mahan as vice chair. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Helmet. Mrs. Mahan is now nominated uh, for vice chair. Are there any further nominations? Hearing none, can I have a motion to close nominations? So moved. Moved by Mr. Hurd, seconded. Can I get a second motion on the motion by Mr. Hurd, please? Second. Seconded by Mr. Diggins. On a motion to close nominations, Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Mr. Helmet, was that a yes, sir? Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Having only received one nomination, we will now, uh, uh, on the nomination to uh, elect Diane Mahan as the vice chair for the 2021 uh, select board uh, calendar year. I will uh, now turn to a vote. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Congratulations to Mrs. Mahan. And with that, I will. Uh, yield the uh, rest of the meeting to Mr. DeCourcy and Mrs. Mahan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Attorney Haim. And uh, first of all, thank you very much to my colleagues for um, selecting me as chair this year. It's a great honor and uh, I look forward to the upcoming year. Um, I wanna congratulate Mrs. Mahan on, on vice chair, but also uh, congratulate Mr. Hurd on his reelection and Mr. Helmuth on his election to the board and welcome him to the board. And I'm just wondering if either one of you have any uh, brief comments at the, before we get to the next agenda item? 
Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I want to thank Mr. Helmuth and welcome him to the board for the campaign and, and the race. And I also, I, so I do want to thank the voters of Arlington for choosing to reelect me. I, I, like I said, energized and ready to take, tackle some of the important issues that we're dealing with right now in town. Um, but I did want to particularly thank Mr. Helmuth and Jennifer Seuss, who this was a three-way race for two seats with three really qualified candidates, I think. And it's, it was a really positive race and it was an issue-based, idea-based race. And there was never any neg negativity. And I, I put this out yesterday that, you know, I really think given that what we've seen in some of the races in Arlington in the past few years, that our race should be an example of how a, a local election should be run and a, a local race should be run, where it's three candidates just really giving ideas on how they can improve the town. I really do want to thank both Jennifer and Eric for that. And um, again, welcome Eric to the board and thank you for everyone that participated in the election, all the candidates and all the voters, no matter who you support it, supported. Thank you for coming out and participating in the process. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Uh, I want to echo Mr. Hurd's uh, kind remarks. And uh, but first of all, very much thank you to the voters of Arlington for entrusting me with this role. I am beyond thrilled to serve the town that I have grown to love so very much, and I'm lucky to call home. So thank you. Um, and and yeah, thanks to to Jennifer Seuss and for John and to John for running a really great exemplary campaign. I think it represents the best of Arlington. And um, you know we couldn't be prouder of that. Uh, I want to also thank Jennifer for her service to Arlington. She's done great things for the town. I know that she will continue to do so. Uh, thank you very much to my supporters who worked really hard um, in this campaign, and my team. Um, and I want to thank my my husband Jordan for his encouragement, and his patience and his support. And without that, I I would not be here and could not do this. I look forward to serving the town and working with all of you for the next three years. Thank, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Um, Mr. Mr. Okay, Chair, can I just jump in? Because I did actually get yelled at yesterday because my wife said that I never <laughs> thank her. And of course, Eric, now I'm going to get yelled at again. That's Absolutely. It. So I do want to thank my wife and my boy, my kids who, you know, it's a, certainly a sacrifice. So I, I do thank my wife for allowing me to serve the town. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, okay, now on to business. Um, so we will start tonight or next item is item three a COVID-19 update with Christine Bongiorno, Director of Health and Human Services. And that will start with Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations to you and the chairmanship and Ms. Mahan and the vice chairmanship. And also congratulations to John for re rejoining and Eric for joining. So it's a good, good night all around. Um, I'll give a very brief introduction. Um, it's been um, just a little while since Christine has been before this board to provide an update on our continued uh, preparations and activities around the pandemic. Uh, I know Christine and her team, uh, along with many town employees, ha have been working continually very hard in response to the pandemic. There, over the past several months now, been a lot of focus on vaccinations. I think Christine will describe that our role in the vaccinations is starting to slow down, but um, there's still many vaccinations to go before we get to herd immunity. So um, there's going to be continued focus on the restrictions that are necessary to keep us all safe until we get to herd immunity. Uh, but with that, um, we have Christine Bargiano, Director of Health and Human Services here to give an update to the board and then answer any questions that you might have. Great. Thank you, Adam. And thank you, board, for the invite for tonight. Um, so I want to start by just letting you know that since uh, last March 2020, we've had uh, just over 1,800 cases so far here in Arlington, uh, that uh, includes 86 deaths. Um, we've had uh, a few spikes and um, a few uh, months where we've had fewer cases, but we're starting to see a slight uptick over the course of the past week. Um, we've definitely seen a, a little bit of a bump and we're seeing that across the state and across the country as well. Um, just the, it's, it appears as if there, there's a, a slight increase in cases. Um, you know, I want to just, you know, sort of, um, you know, give you an, an idea of what we're doing in our department. So um, our department is continuing to do contact tracing 
um, which is essentially where um, when we find out that there's a positive case, we contact that case and determine who they've been in contact with and quarantine and isolate um, cases to prevent the additional spread of the virus. Um, so we continue to do that. We're also continuing to enforce the governor's orders to prevent additional cases um, and really looking at ways um, that we here locally can um, continue to control the spread. Um, we've definitely seen the increase in cases in the younger population. So it's not unlike what we're seeing again across the state and across the country. Um, our average age for the past, um, I'd say month is about 35, age 35, whereas, um, you know, about six months ago, the average age was significantly higher. So it was probably up in the 50s to 60s. Um, so we've definitely seen um, the age come down a bit. And, and that is due to vaccinations, um, you know, and I think also just sort of some loosening of, of some restrictions that um, really may impact the younger population. Um, you know, our department also has been focusing since January on vaccinations. Um, you all are aware that the state um, has shifted vaccinations to mass vaccination sites and local health departments are um, have a limited role in vaccinating the population. Um, we've, we've jumped at every opportunity to receive vaccine um, and we've done that um, in partnership with Lexington and Belmont. And uh, I will say that by the end of this week, we will have um, given out about uh, over 6,000 doses of vaccine here in, in town and um, you know, with our partners in the other two communities. Um, we are currently doing homebound vaccinations. So we're going into homes and vaccinating people that are unable to leave their homes. Um, this is an incredibly important group because um, we definitely saw some, some, a lot of cases and some deaths, unfortunately, in people that were homebound because of the, the people coming into their homes um, with the virus. So we're, we're really happy to be, be being able to provide that, that service. Um, you know, we just finished up last week our vaccinations in the senior housing building. So working with the Arlington Housing Authority uh, and vaccinating our seniors in those buildings has been uh, was was also incredibly um, important for our team because we saw a lot of cases um, that you know that resulted in um, hospitalizations and and um, you know we just knowing that we protected that population um, was great for our, our department as well. Um, you know, at, at this point, we will be finishing out our second doses of our Moderna um, and, and we'll essentially be closing out our vaccination program um, and shifting. We have joined a partnership um, with a number of other communities uh, just east, uh, northeast and east of Arlington. So including Somerville and Cambridge um, to establish a regional collaborative to do a mass vaccination site. Um, unfortunately, at this time, there's no vaccine available to the collaborative, um, but we are uh, ready to stand up a, a site in the event that the vaccine does become available. Um, you know, at this point in the, um, the pandemic, we, we just continue to urge our residents to be vigilant. Um, we want to see our numbers coming down. We want to see our residents getting vaccinated. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, with, with those two pieces, I think we can, um, you know, we can sort of be on, a, on the road to um, being out of this uh, soon, soon, we're hoping. Uh, but it is, it is incredibly important for our residents to continue to wear masks, to continue to um, stay, you know, stay, stay apart from, from others that are not in their direct homes. Um, and just be aware that, you know, every interaction that you have, somebody may feel that they have an allergy or a cold. It, it, it is likely, you know, that they have COVID. And I think that's what we're hearing from people that said, you know, that, that we recently um, have had conversations with that are positive. You know, they just don't believe that they have COVID and, um, you know, that they could be spreading it. So it's important that people just remember to be vigilant and continue to, to stay safe. So that's what I have. I'm available for questions. Thank you very much, Ms. Bongiorno, and, and thank you for all the work that you and your team have done um, over the past uh, the 13 months since the onset of the pandemic. Um, right now, I'll turn to the board for any questions or comments. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and congratulations. I've already uh, served under Steve as a chairman in Long Range Planning Committee uh, when he was assigned to that um, Mr. DeCourcy was kind enough to call me and a senior member um, sort of give me the first right of refusal to chair Long Range Planning Committee. But um, my background and Steve's background, I'll put my financial knowledge up against anyone, but um, with Steve's long years on the finance committee and dealing with Minuteman, um, the better choice. So he's doing double duty chair person. So thank you. Um, I guess my question, 
question or comment, and I'm not sure if it's to our Health and Human Services Director or our town manager. Um, I know the library's opened on sort of a book and appointment only, and they have uh, someone at the entrance of the library to verify that you do have an appointment and you're coming in by yourself or I don't know if you can book somebody else with you. I do know that the select board's office, the treasurer's office, and um, the town clerk's office um, have been open but closed. But you can, again, email Colin um, and either drop things off or we get the information to you. Um, and I'm not going to talk about, well, I will talk about public works, police and fire who've been working every day through this COVID, regardless of what you may think of them. Um, Originally, when we had this discussion, the town manager indicated that um, I was asking when the rest of town offices, the staff would be back in the same model that the select board, town clerk, and treasurers have done. So it's still not open to the public, but it's open for the public by appointment or something else. And originally, I was told is when there's a vaccine available. And then I heard it's uh, when there's herd immunity, which could be 70 to 80 percent. And that might not happen until late summer, early fall. So are we saying all those offices? unlike the ones I've cited are gonna stay closed until possibly the fall and no staff come in. So Mr. I, I'll go, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll, I'm happy to go first and then Christine can uh, share her view from the public health point of view. Uh, no, we're, we're definitely not waiting until the fall. Uh, there's already been a ramp up in staff and other offices. I was in town hall today and the, uh, the building was quite full, frankly. Um, so, as uh, the general population uh, becomes eligible as of Monday, April 19th, and a larger portion of the population has become uh, vaccinated, we'll start having more staff come, um, come into the building on a week by week basis. And I think the timeline we talked about at uh, maybe not the last meeting, but the meeting before was aiming for a controlled reopening to the public sometime in the summer as we approach herd immunity. But I think we'll have staff, um, more staff coming back in as people are getting vaccinated in the coming weeks. Okay, because uh, it, it just seems like a big contradiction. Um, it, it's been working and nobody in the, in the offices, the three, I'm not saying open to the public, even if you don't want to do by, by the appointment, you know, we can run something down to the portico that you need, but I understand the work at home thing and that's great. Um, but just to get staff back in, back to all the technology and hardware and software back in the office. Um, and I'm not being disrespectful, but I'm just, you know, hearing from other employees um, that saying, hey, can I get one of those work at home jobs? I'd love to do that. You know, um, they've all been forced to go back to work. So I'd like to, I'm not saying you have to subject yourself to catching COVID, but um, I'd like to see town hall basically running the same way every office as the three have been doing since Thanksgiving. So that's just my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chair. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and again, want to thank Mrs. Bongiorno and for all the work that you and the health department does. And, you know, I've just having kids in school and being part of the town, I've had a few opportunities to reach out to the health department as recently as last Friday with questions and it's amazing that we can get somebody right away who on the phone who can answer our questions and we were get we had an issue that came up with an exposure that we we're getting some conflicting information on and we were able to get the answer right away and I really think that that is a critical asset for the town that we have a health department that is not only working hard to keep us safe but is available to answer questions when issues come up. And so I do thank you for that. My one question, I know you brought up the reason, regional vac vaccination site that the town manager had spoken with a few meetings back. And, you know, we're really excited about that with all the struggles that the states have had with the statewide website. So once that's up and running, I, I assume, are we good to go, A, once we have more vaccines are available? And where will the, is it one set vaccination site or does it shift to the eight communities? Will there be some instances where the vaccination sites are local in Arlington? I'm happy to answer that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm happy to answer that, Adam. Um, 
So Tufts uh, University in Medford is one of the, the main sites. And then there'll be um, satellite sites in uh, some of the other communities as well. I don't believe Arlington will be a site, although I know we, we all know we could run it really well. I think we really are hoping to get into the communities where COVID was, um, you know, pretty, has, has hit some communities pretty hard. So such as Chelsea and Everett. Um, so Tufts will be the main site and then additional sites throughout the region, sub-region. And are those vaccination sites available only to the eight communities that are part of the region? No, they would. The requirement is that they're open to everyone in Massachusetts. Okay. And how does somebody, once that, that's set up, how does somebody sign up for that vaccination site? So there'll be a link um, on the state site, similar to the other links. Um, it'll be the same process as one would sign up for a vaccination at the Heinz or Gillette or any of the other mass vaccination sites. Um, it would be the same system. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, um, Ms. Pongiorno. Uh, just a few questions. Uh, so um, it's something to, to maybe support what you're, you're doing Ian, and educate me, the, the, the viewers. Ian, I, as I've said repeatedly, I really support the conservative approach Ian, to what we're doing. I mean, the virus doesn't care if we're impatient. I mean, the virus doesn't care I mean, if we are tired. I mean, it's, we need to protect everyone as much as we can I mean, against getting the virus. On the B117 strain, um, is it more deadly? I, I know it spreads faster, but if people get it, I mean, do they get sicker? Do they, is there a greater chance of dying, all other things being equal? By that, I mean, I understand that we have better treatment now, uh, but what's your take on that or your understanding? I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that the chair has has given me the approval to go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Uh, hey, uh, absolutely, I'm sorry. I was sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, Steve. Um, so it's my understanding that the strain is just more. Um, it makes it more contagious instead of it being more deadly. It is um, just more. Um, it, it's just easier for for it to pass from one person to another. Got you. Thank you very much. Me. So are we seeing B117 in our community? We are. There are a lot of cases in Massachusetts, and there are cases. Uh, there, ha so we've had a few um, tested. It's a different test, so they run the the test to see if someone's positive or negative. They have to then take it a step further and do genomic sequencing of each sample, and that's not done on every sample. So there are um, some positive uh, for for various um, uh, strains in Arlington, um, but we would assume that the majority of the strains circulating right now are, are um, the uh, variants. Gotcha, thank you very much. And, and we still don't know Ian, if the vaccine me, stops people from spreading it, right? That's why we have to wear masks because I mean, you may be able to, um, the vaccine may stop you from getting sick me, or dying, but you may still get it and then shed it, right? That's still the understanding? That is correct, yes. Okay, thank you. And the last question is, um, when, when you came to us last, you said that uh, people weren't necessarily being cooperative with the contact tracing, meaning that they weren't being particularly forthcoming, or some people weren't. Are you still encountering that? Um, it's it's rare. Uh, I would okay. say the majority of people are, are, are compliant. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate all you do. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Um, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just one brief question uh, before I do. I just want to express my appreciation to, to Ms. Bojena and her amazing team and staff who have worked uh, so hard uh, along with the public safety departments and, and the rest of the town uh, through this pandemic. Uh, if you could just remind those, of, uh, those who may be watching what, what some of the ways that they can um, sign up for or tune in for, for status updates about the pandemic and the, and the town's latest guidelines. Go ahead, Ms. Bonjour. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if the town manager would like to take this one, but um, I'm happy to jump in. Um, so on the town website, people could sign up for, anyone could sign up for um, the alerts that come out um, weekly. And then the town manager does updates. And I also jump in on occasion and do updates through ACMI. Um, and those are posted online uh, and, and aired on, on TV. I don't know if Adam, you have anything else to add? I guess I would only add that um, all the same information that's on the website is also av uh, available via the town social media channels. So um, there's there's multiple different ways you can get in and access the information. 
Great, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helmut. Um, I just have one or two questions, Ms. Bongiorno. And, and one of the things that has come up now that there are three vaccines uh, out there and Johnson Johnson has been out there for a while and, and people, it, at least when they first came out, people saying, is it one that you should uh, try to get over another. And I wonder if you could just comment on that um, in, in terms of the selection um, in, in, in when something becomes available. Thank you for that question. Definitely um, ask that question on occasion. Um, as Dr. Fauci says, take the vaccine that's offered. Um, whatever is available, uh, take that vaccine. And, you know, I, I can't say that we've seen one um, uh, that's been more um, efficient over the other. I, I think here in Arlington, we have seen um, people that have had Pfizer, Moderna, and J&J um, &J, um, have all had um, pretty good success. So. Great, thank you. And just in turn, Mr. Diggins talked about the need to, to keep wearing masks, but just wanted to ask you about the period after you're vaccinated, there's a period of time too before it, it may become effective. And I wonder if you could talk about that. There's a, a two week, um, two weeks between when you get your vaccine, your last dose of your vaccine, or if it's the J&J, &J, the day that you get your vaccine, um, there's that two weeks where your body's building immunity and you're not fully protected. So we, we when we vaccinate, we urge people uh, to continue to, to be very um, careful. Um, be, people should be careful no matter what, but you know, it's, it's extremely important because I think some people get the vaccine and they think they're free to, to go do what, um, you know, what they've always done before. So it's just important that people remember that it's, it's extremely important that you continue to wear masks. Great. Well, again, thank you very much and, and for all the work that you've done. And I had mentioned in an earlier meeting, I brought my mother to one of the vaccinations at the high school and, and it was just remarkable the work you and the team and so many town employees and, and employees from neighboring communities did um, for the, the, the older group in, 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 in town. So thank you so much and, and keep up the great work. Okay. Um, so moving along, we'll move on to the consent agenda, um, which we have three items tonight. Item four is appointment of new election workers, uh, Lisa Carlson Hill, 175 Lowell Street, Giovanna De Stephanis, 113 Palmer Street, Richard Stimfel, 67 Oregon Ave. Um, item five for approval, administrative update to overnight parking waiver. And item six for approval, gifts and donations for COVID-19 supplies and testing. Um, for items five and six, we received a memo from Attorney Heim, but I'm wondering, it, since that came in after the initial um, agenda was set, if you could just give us maybe a brief description of those items before we uh, have the vote. Of course, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And I appreciate uh, everybody's patience while putting together a whole bunch of different memos uh, for this uh, organizational meeting. The uh, first item is just an administrative update to your uh, recently revised overnight parking program. Um, as the board will recall, you established rules that basically allowed somebody to qualify for an overnight parking uh, permit exemption based on disability. And your way of proving disability under those regulations was evidence of a handicap plate, uh, evidence of SSDI benefits, a letter uh, from a physician on physician's letterhead stating a disability. Uh, those that policy was based on recommendations by the Massachusetts Office on Disability. Um, a concerned resident uh, became concerned that handicap placards should also qualify, should be treated the same as handicap plates. Uh, the Massachusetts Office on Disability, which has always been a terrific resource and partner for everybody, uh, confirmed that they tend to treat these things exactly the same, and unless there was some operational reason why we should treat them differently, uh, they felt you know, it's usually advisable to treat placards and plates the same way. Contacted the Arlington Police Department, appreciated Officer Rateau's time uh, and thought. And uh, the long and short of it is, is that with all that information, I'm just uh, recommending that you add the words handicap placard to that list of ways that you can qualify as uh, disabled for the purposes of the uh, exemption permit only. 
It doesn't address everything else. It's just what you use as proof of showing you have a disability when they make an application to the select board office. So that is that item. The second item, um, uh, I think we were hoping that we would have a few more uh, items for you on this, but we've been tremendously uh, grateful as a town and a community to receive a lot of donations related to COVID relief. Um, one of our biggest donors, um, the um, Arlington Health and Human Services Charitable Corporation has uh, donated $200,000 uh, for COVID relief purposes. Um, they have expected nothing in return. Uh, there's no real conditions on the gift other than purposes that are already well established under Health and Human Services. Uh, but the select board is technically required to accept these gifts. And it's also, of course, a wonderful opportunity to just broadcast to a broader audience, though I know uh, Ms. Bongiorno and others have, have already been uh, thanking these folks for their hard work and generosity, really aggregating a lot of individual donations as well as uh, providing organizational support. So that's what those two items are about. And I, again, appreciate the board's patience in, um, in having all that stuff come together for myself and the comptroller um, and um, uh, with respect to the overnight uh, parking addition. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Heim. And on all three items, and now I'll turn to the board. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Move approval. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. I'll second, and no need to apologize, Mr. Heim. I fully understand what it's like to be really busy now. And I know you're busier than most of us. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Helmuth, any questions or comments? Uh, no, other than to thank Mr. Heim for that, because as the new kid in the block, it was very useful. Uh, Mrs. Mahan, any comments or questions? Um, yes, just uh, a two-part question or a global sort of question. Um, I was wondering if um, either our Health and Human Services Director or the town manager could send, I certainly would be interested in um, sort of the guidelines that the town COVID fund has for what we will expend the funds on. And then my second part is more of a global question with the Recovery Act monies that we're um, slated to receive, an amount to be determined, somewhat over 30 million. I know um, President Biden and um, his secretaries spoke about the oversight they would have and also working with the state. Um, I'd like to know when it, it is formed, when we get to that point in the process, um, what the towns, who, who's gonna sort of audit on the town side, this oversight of the spending of those COVID-19 funds. I'm not talking about any money that we can demonstrate revenue and maybe be able to put into the override stabilization fund because obviously that's kind of dry. Um, and also how we're gonna get that message out. Cause I just, I wouldn't want a department um, maybe think they have a tacit understanding that something applies and then it doesn't and it turns into something else. So I know I'm probably really premature on that part. And I know that the state and um, the federal government through state agencies will oversee that, but um, I'd like to also see how we're gonna sort of do that on the town side. Thank you. Mr. Chapterly. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so on the first question, I'd be happy to work with Ms. Bongiorno to get that information to you. Um, so we, we can put that together. On the second question, I, I think that depending on how exactly we're able to utilize the funds will depict just how we process them. From an auditing perspective, as you mentioned, we will likely re rely on our finance department and our comptroller's office for the accounting and auditing of the funds. If the fund usage points towards a more robust usage for the nonprofit and private sector, um, we'll have to figure out what the right arm um, is so that uh, with you know what the right arm or form of government is so um yeah as we learn more i think we'll be able to better answer that question thank you mr chair thank you mrs mahan um so on the consent agenda on a motion by mr hurd seconded by mr diggins uh, attorney heim I don't know if it, 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 Attorney Heim, for, for the roll call. Sorry about that, Mr. Chair. I was just having a little um, 
technical difficulty there. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Okay, um, item seven, appointments to the uh, Equal Opportunity Advisory Committee, Kate Bender for a term to expire 131-24. Um, is Ms. Bender with us tonight? Yes, I just promoted it. Yes, it's coming up. Okay. Video is not, I'm sorry. Let's see if I can get it. Good. Good. No, no, we can see you. Okay. Um, great. Well, good, e good Hello. evening. Um, I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about, about yourself and see if they do we have any questions from the board. Sure. Um, I am a 25 year experience in financial services, mostly in human resources. So I have experience in organizational effectiveness, employee engagement, talent management, and mostly in financial services. I recently retired from the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, where I led a group of HR professionals. So with my retirement a year and a half ago, I'm doing some part-time consulting and also made a commitment to get more involved in my community. I've been in Arlington for about 10 years. Great. Thank, thank you very much. Um, I'll turn to the board now. Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am very happy to make the motion to approve the appointment of uh, Ms. Bender. And, and, and at some point, I'd like to ask a few questions and make a few comments. Is now the time or should I wait, Mr. Chair? I'm not as good a time as any. Okay, great. So, so you had me at Los Alamos Labs, <laughs> and then, and then, and then you really got me at Federal Reserve of Boston. But, but really, what since since did? You know, let me see if I can pull this up really fast. Is um the the header the ability to navigate navigate complex political environments to reach desired outcomes? I can just tell you now. I'm going to be reaching out to you because oh, please by, reaching, do. by reaching out to you, I'm not going to be violating open meeting laws because I can only talk to one of my colleagues here, but, but <laughs> there's going to be many opportunities where I think you can really give me some advice. So, so I'm really thrilled. I mean, and the best part of this thing is, is seeing the qualifications of people who really apply to um, volunteer for various positions in town. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, no questions. Just thank you for being willing to serve. It's one of the things that makes Arlington such a great town, and we are delighted that you are willing to put in your time to give us a hand. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. I'm very thrilled to have you, Ms. Bender. Um, you didn't really retire. You're just still working, and you're right. not getting paid. So <laughs> um, I'm giving back. I, yeah. And uh, I see that you do some pro bono work, so, you know. Yeah. I, Shout out to you for that also. So um, you're still working. We can't afford you, um, <laughs> but we're very pleased to have volunteers. We're always amazed by the caliber of volunteers that we get for the committee, not only the caliber and the experience in the, in the background, but the applicability to the position that they're applying for. Because, uh, you, you know, last thing I want to do is put someone in a volunteer position that doesn't really set them up for success or the town for success. So we got a double win here. Um, um, look forward to when everything gets back to normal in 2023, maybe 24. Um, we actually can meet safely in person sometime, but I will avail myself of the opportunity to uh, contact you, COVID-19 safe ways that we're doing right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, Mr. Hurd, and if I could ask you for a second on Mr. Diggins' motion too. Second. Yep. And just thank you for your willingness to serve. We say this many times, but we have so many people that apply to be part of our community in our, um, our commissions and boards, and we're always floored at the level of talent that we have right here at home, and we get it for free, which is beautiful. Yep. We get a lot of great consulting work at, at a great price. So thank you for your willingness to serve. And my only question is if UNC Greensboro ever plays Wake Forest in a D1 sporting event, who do you root for? 
That's a tough one, but I, I lean Wake Forest, I'm afraid. It's a good choice. All right, well, thank you for your willingness to serve. Thanks. Mr. Hurd, and Ms. Bender, I wanna echo the comments of my colleagues. Thank you very much for your willingness to serve and uh, we really appreciate you stepping up to, to serve in this committee. Um, so with a motion by Mr. Diggins, a second by Mr. Hurd, uh, Attorney Heim. Thank you. I'll, I'll try to get the order right this time. Okay, so uh, Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda, item eight, a request for parking for Whittemore Park phase one construction um, Ali Cotter and uh, Mr. Chapterline. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Chapterline first on this. So Ms. Carter will be joining us shortly. Uh, this is in relation to the upcoming construction work for the renovation of the park at Whittemore Park, but Ali is here and I will let her describe this request. Thank you. Um, Ali Carter, Economic Development Coordinator. Thank you for your time this evening. Um, yep, we're requesting uh, seven spaces in the Russell Common Lot for Jam Corp to park their vehicles, um, portable toilet, things they need to get their construction project done, um, which we expect to start um, sometime mid to late May um, and hopefully be wrapped up sometime this summer, but we requested ample amount of time just to have some flexibility. Happy to answer, answer any questions. Thank, thank, thank you very much, Ms. Cotter. Uh, turn it to the board. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, I'd like to move approval. And um, just uh, could you uh, re remind the board or tell us kind of where we're at on the schedule of the overall project? Is this starting about when it was planned? Or is it affected by pandemic or bidding? How's it going? We, we would have loved to have done this last year, frankly, um, but the, the construction season and when it would have gone out to bid and there were there were several delays but here we are now <laughs> and we're very happy with um with the design we've come up with and we're already in the planning phase of um phase two which will be accessibility improvements around the house so excellent thank you no further questions okay thank you mr helmuth uh, mrs mahan i'd like to second that and thank you once again um i sort of all of us do interface with Ms. Cotter on, on various committees and subcommittees and always really impressed, but I'm, I'm afraid to say that and tell people about it because usually when that happens, they, they leave us <laughs> like Ms. Workho. <laughs> but um, it's such a phenomenal job that uh, Allie and others in planning have been, especially around um, the small business is issues and outreach and CDBG. And um, you're definitely working from home because uh, I see you a lot and uh, I refer a lot of people and businesses to you and you get right back to them and they report right back how nice she is. And I said, well, don't tell too many people. We don't want her to get stolen away. So thank you so much. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Definitely excited about this project and, you know, obviously COVID delayed it, but I think this is gonna be a great project by the time this gets through. Um, I know, I don't know if we had spoken with this at the economic development level, but do we know if, Aeronaut is out again this year if they're not interested in participating again this summer? They are not uh, able to participate for a number of reasons. Um, but, you know, from their perspective, it's just not good business this year. And from the town's perspective, it's just not, um, we're not ready for that kind of activity. So, it's right. I mean, not. I just wanted to know if, if we needed to start thinking about a new site. I understood. Disappointing. I know everyone likes that, but we'll enjoy it in the brand new renovated Woodmore Park the, the following year. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, no questions, no comments. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I don't have any questions either. Thank you very much for the memo and, and looking forward to the, to the work to be done. Uh, so on a motion by Mr. Helmuth, second by Mrs. Mahan, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Unanimous vote. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, item nine for discussion, uh, future select board meetings. And so on, on this, I, we will talk about some dates and, and also bear in mind that town meeting starts April 26th. Um, so I think right now we have on our calendar through April 26th, we don't have anything for May or June. So maybe if we could look at our calendars and, and um, I imagine we're gonna be going well into June or not June, into May for the town meeting. Um, so as, as we look at this, um, we will be in session during town meeting, but we probably should pick a couple of dates in May and a couple in June. So I, I don't know if anybody has any suggestions for that. And in 24 in May. Okay. Is that anybody have any is it that that does it seems to make sense? Anybody have any questions on that date or any conflicts? I'm sorry, okay. Mr. Chair, what, was the, what was the date again? I couldn't hear. Yeah, May 10 and May 24. To, no conflicts. I would, if possible, like to avoid the 24th. Um, if it screws up the schedule, I can make it work. But if, if it's possible to put it on a, a separate night, then that would work for my schedule. Okay. Um, the only issue, the 31st, we run up against Memorial Day, right? I, so I think um, we, I think how the about, third was still. How about the um, 10th and Wednesday, the 26th? Yeah, only that's what I was just going to look at. I think in on the 10th, we're still going to be in town meeting, so we'll only have a one-hour um, uh, select board meeting. I'm praying to the Lord God up above for many things, so I won't say for this, but um, by May 26th, there's a fairly good shot we could be wrapped up with town meeting, maybe not, um, and then we'd switch back to 7.15 in a full meeting. Um, but just um, it, if people want to pick a different date, but uh, maybe if we could meet that week, um, maybe not the 26th, Mr. Chairman. What date do you think besides that Monday night? Well, I, I no, I think that's that that's fine with me because that that avoids a conflict. Is the 26th the problem, Mr. Hurd, or is that okay? No, nope, that's fine. Okay, and Mr. Diggins and Mr. Helmuth, is that okay? Yeah, this far out, I don't have a problem. I can I can certainly block that time out, you know. So. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's what So do we do 7 p.m. on town meeting nights when we meet? That's right. Yeah, that's fine. And then, okay. All right. And so for June, um, why don't we take a look at that too and see if anybody, um, if you, you want to discuss dates for that. Any dates work for me? 721. Yeah, maybe, yeah, that's what I, I think. And just a question for Mr. Chapdelaine. Does it matter? I don't know if there's anything as we get closer to the month that the 28th would make a difference for the 21st. I, I'd like to do 7 and 21, but if there's a reason to do it closer to the end of the fiscal year, I just want to ask you about that. Um, I would imagine we can have any potential transfers the board would need to approve ready by the 21st. So I, I think that would be okay. Okay. All right. Great. Um, how is the seventh and twenty-first for the other members? Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Mr. Diggins. I'm sorry. Yes, I was not in my head, but I should have said verbalized. Yes, it's fine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Okay. Sure. And I don't know if we want to go into July or if do we just want to take care of May and June at this point. Um, if I could, Mr. Chair. Sure. Um, I would say maybe perhaps. It sometime next month's meeting, if you could work with the town manager as the newly elected chair, um, usually in July, sometimes in August, where we have the um, one month meeting, we incorporate the goals and missions um, forum, Charette. So um, I guess the June or August date would kind of drive around that. So if you two could have conversations and then maybe come back and make a recommendation at the next meeting or whatever. Sure. Okay, so that's fine. So we'll just take care of May and, and, and June for now. So just to repeat, May 10th, May 26th, June 7th, and June 21st. Good. And this doesn't require a vote. We'll just put it on the calendar. Um, okay, item 10, for discussion and vote, support for ARB votes on town meeting articles 35, 38, and 43. Uh, we have Ms. Reid and Attorney Heim. Um, turn it over to Attorney Heim first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, 
as the board will recall, you had some you had a joint meeting with the ARB. And one of the things that came out of that was a discussion about select board articulating support for um, a limited number, or at least discussing a limited number of uh, ARB votes and recommendations uh, within the town meeting cycle. Uh, to be clear, the ARB has already had their hearing. They have, uh, for the purposes of 40A, they've reached a vote of the recommended action that was provided to you, and they've set forth the basis of their discussion, um, which have all been provided to you as you members of the board. Um, I've drafted some sort of uh, generic language if the board is inclined to vote to articulate some sort of advisory support. Your vote is not necessary. You don't have to take a vote on any of these items. Um, you just certainly don't have to, uh, you certainly can voice support, which happens from time to time on a finance article. Sometimes the finance committee will vote uh, about an article that's not strictly within their uh, jurisdiction um, as an advisory matter. Uh, here, the ARB has invited uh, your comment if you'd like to provide it. Um, and so you don't have the controlling motion. It would just be something that I would layer into your select board report as the select board voices support for these articles um, with this very basic rationale, understanding that the sort of more thorough discussion of the articles uh, is in the ARB's report. So with that, um, Ms. Raid is available to answer any questions the board may have. Again, this isn't a warrant article hearing in the traditional sense of the word because the articles have already been voted on and disposed of by the body that has jurisdiction. And um, you are free to support them. You are free to make no comment whatsoever. Um, so uh, if I can be helped procedurally, I'd, I'd be happy to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Heim. Uh, good evening, Ms. Ray. Thank you for, for joining us tonight. Um, did you want to make any comments on the, the articles? Just take questions, or whatever you'd prefer. Um, good evening. I'm Jenny Reid. I'm the Director of Planning and Community Development. I think that Doug's um, draft is a good starting point, and uh, hopefully you've also had a chance to at least see the report to town meeting issued by the ARB. And I think that that provides even more uh, sort of additional information about the discussion around each item that we're talking about this evening. I'm just glad to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Um, so let me uh, go to the board now. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was hoping I was sending you ESP calling me first. Um, I, I just got these, uh, the comments in the, board agenda materials at um, 1.50 a.m. this morning. Um, I understand everybody's busy and has lots of things to do, but I've done this for several years now in a row, especially around warrant article hearings, uh, materials attached to warrant articles, um, you know, Friday at the very latest, because I truly do look at it over the weekend. I could not even look at these until as everyone knows my family circumstances, I'm a caretaker for three disabled adults and I have my job as a court reporter, which I work out of my home all day long. And I maybe scanned over these for 20 minutes. Um, I would recommend to my colleagues that, you know, we have any questions or discussions, but we did set up a process like two, two and a half years ago. And we did do it last fall, where unfortunately our colleagues on the redevelopment board got subjected to an AFR uh, capture of our open forum and even though we stressed this was a joint meeting, where we didn't do that this year, but, but the reason why we set up the process was that anytime that both boards were gonna have a joint approval, we would sort of go through the process together um, so that we would be there for the Warren article hearings, hear the pros and cons, have the materials far in advance. And the reason we did that is a couple of years ago when we did it and we just endorsed it, and, and really kind of got crucified at town meeting because we didn't have the working knowledge, meaning me as a member of the select board um, to really explain it as well as even explain it to um, help the planning board, the ARB um, support it. And there were a couple articles in that town meeting that um, in the end, I think a majority, one or two of them, majority of the board of everyone was not in support of them. So we had this process put in place we didn't do that this time, that's okay. Uh, but since we didn't do that, and since I literally 
have skimmed over these maybe 20 minutes, um, I wouldn't be comfortable. I don't think the board, we should set ourselves up that way because, um, and then endeavor for future ARB select board warrant articles, we go back to that process. So we know this stuff inside and out. And if there's something that one of us catches that we don't understand and after expl explaining it's wrong, and then maybe redevelopment board will agree. Um, I'm, I'm just not comfortable voting on these. Um, I'd be happy to vote to receive and any questions that people have. So that, that's, and I'm not trying to be um, uh, very negative or anything like that, but believe me, um, I work at 80 hours plus a week uh, and uh, I've been doing six hour depositions every day and then turn around, transcribe and get them back the next morning. And the two attorneys will know, you know, to get 300 pages out the next day. I'm really not sleeping. So I would once again um, say to the town manager and town council, please, 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 we need this stuff. I prefer when I'm chair, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday afternoon at the latest. And in a case of an emergency, dump everything you have Thursday afternoon and get that last piece on Friday so that we're not getting a big dump um, last minute. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, Mr. Hurd. I'll blame the prior chair for the, for that. Um, no. You know, I, I know when we had this joint meeting with myself, town manager, Ms. Reid, and the Ms. Zembury, um, we certainly knew there would be a tight time frame because of the statutory requirements for town meeting when the articles could be submitted, and then we had to have we wanted to make sure that all the articles were heard and final comments were made before the auxiliary board, we'll call it weighed in. Um, I certainly agree on Article 35. I think our Article 35 is a complex issue that re you re we really would have to have more information on in order to be able to come to a decision on. And I'm certainly not prepared to give input on that. I would be prepared if the board's so inclined to make a motion to approve or to support Articles 38 and 43 because I think they're similar articles to articles that have been proposed in previous years, whereas accessory dwelling units is something that we've been talking to talking about for a few years and almost passed a couple of town meetings ago. And I certainly think that that is a good stepping stone to some of the discussions that we've had about affordable housing and really looking at the zoning bylaws to see if there's any common sense changes we can make to support that goal. As well as Article 43, I think is a pretty basic and kind of no-brainer article that allows us to simply create more energy-efficient homes and doesn't burden the current footprint of the houses. Um, so I would be prepared to make a motion on those two, but I certainly would like to hear what the other board members would say, um, and I definitely understand Mrs. Mahan's position on that. Mr. Chair, you, if Mr. I could modify my um, feelings. Sure. I literally hadn't gotten to the last two Warren articles in this. I was focused on the first. Um, but now listening to uh, Mr. Hurd's explanation and skimming through these quickly, and we have had extensive hearings last year, um, I would um, sh share in Mr. Hurd's um, comments um, regarding the final two Warren articles. 38 and 43. So I guess my main one would be 35. I would not want to. So I better be interested, Mr. Chair, what my other colleagues have to say. Okay, great. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And then thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, 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 um, and I, I, like, thank you, uh, Ms. Raid. Our second time today, 12 hours later. You know, so so uh, it's good to see you. Uh, I'm still hanging in there. You know, so uh, and and um and, and I'll just say, you know, perhaps the internet just works faster for me. But I got the um, the RB articles from Mr. Heim on Saturday morning at 10:40. But but I think I'm special. Uh, but anyway, so I, I got I had a chance to um, to read them, and I actually had a chance to read the ARB report, and and I support them all. Uh, but I look for whatever reason, I mean, um, one colleague isn't ready to move forward. And I've been in other meetings, I mean, other committees where when a key person isn't ready to move forward, and then I'm comfortable holding back. And uh, uh, so if you're not ready to move forward on 35, because there's not enough time to think about it, that's fine. If we can move forward with um, any of the others, I'm fine with that too. But, but I will say that 
I um, understand ARB's position on all of them and I agree wholeheartedly. And so that's it for me, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, I would also support Mr. Hurd's suggestion uh, for uh, that was uh, also supported by uh, Ms. Mahan. Um, and I think I have a, a, a obvious different reason um, in, in that I'm uh, very new to, to this as in a few hours ago. And, um, and, I, and, uh, and I do feel because of my past study, um, more comfortable with those two articles in the, in the substance of them. I did some time to review it. I do wanna say though, that my reticence on 35 is, has nothing to do with its merits. I actually am really intrigued by some of the ideas that are there and some of the forward thinking uses for our, our industrial um, areas. Uh, vertical gardening caught my got, caught my attention. Maker spaces, artist loss, and something I've been hearing from a couple of residents recently is a concern about the loss the loss of artist residences. So um, I'm intrigued by what's in there, but I think zoning and a big change like that is is really complex, and I just feel like in good faith I I don't. I would need a lot more information and I'm willing as a town meeting member to, to contemplate that, you know, when we get there. But, but I, I thank I you, Mr. The creativity that, that, that is, is apparent there. Great, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Um, yeah, so I, I just have a couple of comments on this. I, I agree with, with Mr. Hurd. I, I, because of the number of items proposed in article 35 and, and you know, at least with respect to mixed use, namely residential, there are some changes that I think need to be explained that um, require some additional um, research. And, and, and I wouldn't be comfortable at this stage, I'm not against it, but I just, I don't think as a support. So I, I, I could certainly support doing articles 38 and 43 and, and not taking action on 35 isn't any action on our part on the merits or any feeling, it just, we're, we're not ready to do that. So I think there's a consensus of the board, at least to do those two. So I'd ask for a motion on that. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Second. Yeah. So I'd be uh, happy to move to receive the town manager's, or sorry, town council's report on Article 35 and move to um, provide our support as outlined in the town council's recommended votes for Articles 38 and 43. I'll Thank second you, that. Hart. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, any further questions or comments, Mr. Diggins? All right. Yes, yes, I do. Uh, so, look, I'm, I'm going to stick with my plan to, to vote to support these two. But I guess my concern, though, is that we do, I think, put 35 at a bit of a disadvantage if we come across as like positive for this one, those two, and then not so much um, for for thirty five. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I really support thirty five. I mean, um, I, 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 mean, I have listened to um, the um, some of the discussion or or deliberations on the, the industrial zoning um, review that the zero. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting exactly which committees. Did, did what, uh, but but I, I've been impressed. I mean, I like where they're headed with it. I mean, I think it's important that we do it. And I'd hate for us to inadvertently put it at a disadvantage. I mean, that said, I'm gonna stick with my plans to support the, the vote for another two, but I just wanna flag that as a concern about what we're gonna do in the process. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. And, and just one comment on that. I, I, I think Attorney Heim could put that in as a comment that the lack of action on 35 isn't any determination on the merits of it. But I, I think you also run the risk if you just simply endorse something without having looked into it as a group, it, it, that the, the endorsement or support really doesn't mean that much either. So I think if, if the comment can be clear um, on that point, uh, you know, won't be a disadvantage, but I appreciate what you're saying there. Um, Mr. Helmuth, any further questions or comments? No, thank you. Okay. Great. So on a motion by Mr. Hurd, uh, seconded by Mrs. Mahan for endorsement of articles 38 and 43 and receipt of the report for article 35, uh, Attorney Heim. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and my understanding is that, that this motion would basically mean that I'll fold these into the select board's uh, report um, as just advisory uh, pieces. So they won't really stand out that much as you said, since you're not commenting on all ARB articles anyway. 
Uh, um, uh, Mr. Chair, um, I made my yes, I seconded Mr. the Mahana. motion, and I, I I apologize. I didn't get your attention for any questions that I might have before the vote. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I, I should have um, agree with Mr. Hurd's motion. Um, to Mr. Jiggins' point, um, the way this process was set up is that if and when there is some uh, uniformity um, on the redevelopment and select board, um, that we follow the process and then vote on that. And on those that the board redevelop, the select board invites redevelopment board to vote on and vice versa. If there's not a vote, then there's really no comments. It's just providing the opportunity. So the, it's so I, I understand Mr. Diggins' point. Um, we've never in the past put, um, we heard, we voted nothing. What it is, this is our opportunity to say, you're invited to join us one, two, all or none of them. So we only comment on the ones that we're um, agreeing with, with the redevelopment board. So I, regarding article 35 from the selectmen's report, uh, select board's report, um, I, I'd like to continue with that tradition. And then the, the second thing, only because you kind of put me on the spot, but um, I went to the select board's office this morning and they also didn't get them until about two o'clock this morning. So I want to find out if Len Diggins, turn, uh, Mr. Diggins has the best super internet ever. Um, and just asked Attorney Heim, did these go out Saturday? And we didn't get them until Monday morning. Mr. Chair, Mayor. Because I have the yes. email and, and, and so does the select board. So, so uh, my, my, yeah, go my, ahead, my, Attorney Heim, I'm sorry. Thank you. My best guess is that we're talking about two different things. Um, I sent out a um, uh, draft of the ARB articles at about 1040 Saturday morning. And then I sent the draft select board report, which is the collections of votes and comments you previously approved um, early uh, this morning. So I, I think they're, they're two separate uh, uh, pieces okay. of, of business. Okay, but uh, only uh, what it is is um, I have my packet printed on Friday and I gotta get, get my um, town iPad into um, Dave Good if we still have him or to, to look at it because it, it just doesn't work. Um, and I have the select board office print them for me because I just finally started working in January so I can justify buying a new printer soon. So they print my packet on Friday, um, but si since it wasn't ready, so they don't have to make two trips to my house and I went down this morning. Um, so that's why, that's where the snafu was. And um, I didn't want people to think out there that um, when Mr. Diggins gets them on Saturday morning, I perhaps did also, um, I didn't. I'm very fastidious when I do get stuff. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and I, you know, these were two big reports and I wanna thank Attorney Heim because I, I I see, I got one on Saturday and one at 2.38 this morning. And, and actually I was up when it came in, and, and, and <laughs> which is ridiculous. But um, so I wanna thank you for, for, for sending that attorney Heim. So just to recap, we have a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes, and thanks for the additional explanation about the history of this process, Ms. Mahan. Mr. Hellman. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Okay, thank you, Attorney Hein. Uh, thank you, Ms. Wright. Mr. Chair. Okay, item a little, I'm sorry. Ms. Wright, yes. may I want to- uh... I was raising my hand. Oh, sure, I'm sorry. If oh, I might. Sorry, yeah, that, yeah, that's ahead. okay. I, I also want you to move on, but I, I have a quick question, which is, um, is it possible to come back for one of your next meetings to talk about industrial zoning, the uh, Article 35? Because I, I do very much respect your time and um, your input, and I would very much appreciate that as part of this process. Maybe it's not something that will be put into your report, but if there is an opportunity to come back um, to a meeting, I would be glad to do that and try to figure out how we could do that. Um, based upon the order of warrant articles, I don't think that this will be um, the first week of town meeting. So we might have some flexibility in terms of timing. Alternatively, if you do not wish to do that because of just time constraints around town meeting, 
I would say that I am available to any of you to answer questions once you do start to dig into any of the zoning articles, whether it's Article 35 or any of the others that you have a question about, I'm more than happy to answer your questions um, and try to understand any concerns um, and address those if I can as well. But I, I would love for you to feel um, informed and prepared for the town meeting, as well as anybody who's watching. Um, and so I make myself available either to come back to a meeting or speak one-on-one -on -one with you um, if appropriate or both. Thank you. Great. No, thank you, Ms. Wright, for that. And, and I think, um, well, our next meeting is the first night of town meeting. So let's, let's start with, I think people um, should take you up on your invitation if there are individual questions. And then as we get closer to that date, um, we, we can talk about whether we make it an agenda item or we just um, do it based on the individual discussions. Thank you. Thanks again. Okay, sure. Okay, um, now item 11, uh, for discussion, draft select board report to town meeting. Um, Attorney Heim. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And um, what you have before you is the draft select board report. It uh, reflects all of your votes and comments that you previously approved. Um, a few years ago, uh, we started uh, just compiling the report you didn't used to necessarily approve the report. But we started compiling the report just as a sort of extra layer. Um, we typically note uh, that the in the sort of introduction uh, that's typically done by the chair that votes represent who was on the board at the time. So an approval of the report doesn't necessarily mean that Mr. Helmuth, who was not present for these hearings, for example, um, necessarily concurs with all of the substance. In this particular uh, year, because of the length of the warrant article, uh, the warrant and uh, the timing of a lot of what was going on, uh, we just had our uh, sort of both hearing and final votes and comments on article 25. Um, that's really uh, one of two things that I wanna to raise to your attention uh, because I think it, it's helpful in uh, to, to clarify something that I wanna make sure that the board uh, would be okay with. Uh, if you go to article 25, the vote on the uh, real estate transfer fee, you'll see some highlighted text. The housing plan implementation committee clarified to me what their intent was uh, with respect to article 25. And uh, that was for town meeting to approve uh, ultimately what the uh, rate of the real estate transfer fee is who pays the real estate transfer fee and uh, what the threshold is for the fee to uh, be applied. So that was the only um, change to anything that was uh, approved by the select board um, previously. And it's also reflected uh, further in your comment. Um, if the board's so inclined to approve the report with that sort of uh, correction of of what HPIC was aiming towards, I do think that gets to some of the substantive issues the board was a little bit um, concerned about with respect to the real estate transfer fee in terms of, you know, how clear it's going to be that um, the rate's not going to change from year to year or who it's going to apply to is not going to change from year to year. So that that's the only sort of substantive piece than just having the collection of your final votes and comments all together. The other piece was uh, I did put a list together of the appendix items at the very bottom. Again, I appreciate the, the, the fact that this is um, something that uh, you, you receive with very short notice. And I respect that um, it's, it's a lot to take in. And Ms. Mahan's comments about, um, you know, it's not, not, not easy to, to be given something on a Monday that you're supposed to approve on Monday night. So uh, the appendix items are basically uh, I think all consistent with what we had previously discussed in your final votes and comments, what you've traditionally asked for in the past, such as revolving fund details or the CDBG report. Um, so this would all sort of be part of one packet rather than having your report and then a bunch of supplemental reports. So if there's anything that you guys wanna take out in terms of the appendix items, again, that's the last, uh, basically the last page. Um, if there's any comments you have on article 25, um, you know, if, if you want me to go with the original vote and comment, that's fine. If you want me to update it uh, in this manner to make it clear that 
the sort of intent of HPIC was for town meeting to set the uh, real estate transfer fee rate um, and to um, set what would be sort of the triggering threshold, things of that nature. Okay, thank you, Attorney Heim. Just a question too, because I think we have voted on everything except for Article 25. So are you looking for a vote on the, just on the language in Article 25 or the full report at this point or? So you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, you voted on everything. I, I, again, this is this has been something that we've, we've started doing the last couple of years just to kind of have an additional layer of, is there anything that the board wants to tweak uh, before its final report goes out, it's kind of an opportunity um, to, you know, revisit any anything if issues come up. This is the only issue that's not like an administrative correction that's come up this year. Uh, but you don't have to change anything. If you want, what I would basically do is uh, uh, update that language. But if you wanted to keep the language that you had previously approved on Article 25, I would just keep that. I could just basically reinsert that. Okay. Okay. No, that, that, that's fine. Thank you for the clarification. And just before I go to the board members too, and this is consistent with the practice that we had the past few years where Mr. Helmuth wasn't here for the votes. And as you said, the, the votes are, are within the body of the report and, and what we've done previously, if there is a particular Warren article where Mr. Helmuth, let's say it was a five to zero vote and Mr. Helmuth would have voted differently. Um, he can tell, Tell me at town meet prior to, at town meeting, and I will let the body know, um, you know how he would have voted. So if that's okay with you, Mr. Helmer. Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Mr. Okay. Mr. So, so oh, go ahead. Just, just procedurally. So so would would you or the or or town council recommend that I do or or do not vote on this given given the circumstances? Attorney Heim. Uh, I I think you're just voting on approving the report itself, the votes don't reflect your, your, your vote. So you, you can participate with respect to approving the report, but it would reflect that, you know, these uh, votes reflect the board uh, prior to the uh, change in membership due to the election. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm fine with in certain language saying that the town meeting can vote on the items in 25 pursuant to a recommendation by the select board. I think it's certainly a, a, an article and an issue that will require some more global input from town meeting than just us five members. I always like to say, I'm never one that pinpoints typos because people in glass houses, but on in the insert on section two, it does say a threshold price set by by town meeting. So I assume that that can be corrected. And then on the very last page, I'll just note that we appointed Mrs. Mahan as vice chair. Of course, sir. Yep. That's it. Thank and you, I'll, Mr. I'll, I'll move approval of the of the report as presented by Attorney Heim with those corrections. Great, thank, thank you. Um, Mr. Diggins? I'm happy to second that and I have no comments or questions, thank you. Okay, and, and Mr. Helmuth, I'm gonna to return to you. I'd asked you earlier about that other issues. I don't know if you have any other questions. No, no other questions, thank you. Okay, um, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And no, I think it's good to catch up pick up those and if we pick up any more, we can just email um, town council because town meeting seems to have a field day with everybody, not just the select board getting up saying, you know, your them should be, your band should be then. And, you know, it seems to kind of eat up time. Um, so and I, I would just have one um, uh, modification under article 70 which is the vote on the town clerk study, which the main motion I believe is finance committee. Um, that was a four to one vote. I did vote in the minority. Um, I would just ask that the last sentence um, uh, expressing the minority view um, stops after taking a directly elected office away from voters, period. I understand where the um, remaining part of that sentence 
comes, but I'm afraid it might be misconstrued that um, I didn't feel Dean Common was qualified and um, didn't really marshal us through a process for success. What I was saying um, at the time, probably inartfully so, was that up until the introduction of Dean Carmen, there were a lot of things that we weren't making, I felt making decisions um, purely based around um, discussing the treasurer's office. So I just like the uh, sentence to end away from voters and delete the rest. And that's it, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Okay, thank you. Okay, and, and I, I don't think we need to change to amend Mr. Hurd's motion for that. I think you can make that at, administratively, at, at Attorney Heim. Um, so on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins, uh, Attorney Heim? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourse? Yes. It's an unanimous vote, and I, I appreciate that uh, any other things that folks spot in Ms. Uh, Marr and Ms. Costa have also been terrific. So if there's any uh, other things, we'll make sure we go over it with a fine tooth comb. Thank you very much. Thank you, Attorney Hine. Um, okay, uh, new business. Uh, Attorney Hine. Uh, no new business, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chapdelaine. Uh, no new business tonight, Mr. DeCourcy, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. No new business. Okay, Mr. Diggins. Well, everyone's been congratulated here tonight, except for me. And so I want to congratulate myself on uh, being reelected to uh, a town meeting. And, and, and you know, I, I love being a town meeting member. And I just have a little story from that night and, uh, that encapsulates why I feel so good about it. And I was at the poll, uh, the Thompson School, to get the data from um, 1, 3, and 5. And a couple of people came in 30 seconds before the door closed. And then they voted and they came out. And I was talking to another gentleman. And then he said, yeah, I had my mask on. He said, are you, are you Lynn Diggins? I, mean, uh, I said, yeah. And they said, we just voted for you for town meeting. And, and the woman just gave me a hug. And she was so happy. And, 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 and you know, I mean, I was so happy too. It just makes me want to do a better job at being a town meeting member. So, so, um, so I'm happy I get to do it again for another three years. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins, and congratulations. Um, Mr. Hurd? I should mention that I also, in addition to being reelected to this board, am now one of the newest town meeting members. So people have said for years, you got to sit there, you might as well get to vote. So now I have to, I didn't have to figure out how to vote last time. So now, now I'll have to go to one of the trainings to try to figure it out. Um, I did speak earlier just to thank the voters and what I, and I realized through the meeting that one group that I didn't specifically thank that I wanted to was the poll workers and, and the officers that work at the polls all day on election day. I actually had anticipated with the rule now with the drop boxes where they have to be picked up by eight o'clock that our results would come in around 10, 11 o'clock. And I was really surprised when we were able to get our results very quickly closer to around 8 45 9 o'clock so i do want to thank the poll workers um and everyone to help make the election move forward um i did want to bring up you know there's an issue that came up in arlington today um there were some banners that were raised on mass ave this came to a, there was a banner contest that we've been doing for many many years and there's been a process that's always been followed in regards to these banners i know I've been a past judge on this contest. Uh, Mr. Carroll was a judge before me. Um, in this particular year, we were brought a, an agenda item back at the beginning of January to approve a certain set of banners. The banners that were presented to us were not the banners that were ultimately approved. Um, and you know, at this point it's caused some controversy because one particular banner is really uh, a number of residents are taken offense to. And, you know, I don't want to, as this is a high school contest, I am not here to cast dispersions on any of the participants or, or particularly of any of the banners that came up. But I do want to just say that, you know, I think 
we all could have done better in this process. I, I think the, there was some, a lot of communication gaps between us, the school departments, the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. And you know, we all have to take our, our responsibility for people's feelings in, on both sides of this issue that are being hurt. But in the end, you know, we're trying to per perpetuate unity over the past couple of years. We've had some divisiveness that we've seen at this board at many levels all across Arlington. And at, at any level, when we've dealt with these issues, the Arlington Police Department has been an active participant under Chief Flaherty and the ranking officers and many of the officers have joined the discussion. And it's really been a, it's really been helpful to the discussion, helping us move forward to know that we have the, what we all consistently talk about is this community policing model in the Arlington Police Department. We often say that the Arlington Police Department is a shining example of the way that the police department, police departments across the country should operate. And our officers really are, are should be commended for that. And time and time again, it seems like they don't get the, the respect and the admiration that they, I, what I think, deserve. And this one particular banner seems to depict what is really just not the reality of policing in Arlington. And, you know, I know the, the contest theme was protest. I mean, I would like to see banner contests or contests among our youth with themes such as unity or something along those lines that really help our foster, you know, to eliminate the divisiveness that we sometimes feel. Um, but it's, it definitely doesn't reflect the reality here in Arlington. And it's just, if you look back in the past year where there was a number of protests sometimes every night and they were amazing. They, you know, we Arlington in the face of this reckoning on racial injustice stood up and said, we're not gonna tolerate this as a community here or anywhere else. And we stood up with our police department and our residents and declared Black Lives Matter, and we continue to do so. But in, in the midst of all those protests, we never had any instances of issues with our, the Arlington Police Department. And I think that should be recognized that 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 so, that the art, some of the artwork that was raised doesn't depict the reality of the situation in Arlington. And again, I think people really need to look at our police, police department and the community policing model that they consistently put forth and really give them some admiration and recognition for that. So that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and um, first, it's the first night of um, Ramadan. So for those who, um, observe that. I wish you a happy and blessed Ramadan. Um, and, and I believe it's a month long. So um, I'll be sending you prayers of strength and good wishes um, as you celebrate this holy day. And um, I, I agree with my colleague, Mr. Hurd's remarks. I'm probably going to be a little bit more. Um, I did have a conversation, a calm conversation versus one I would have had with the town manager in the, this morning. Um, but uh, I had called, I didn't leave a message, you called me back. Um, I do place, uh, I'll accept my, Mr. Hurd's um, comments that, you know, we all have to uh, know better, do better. Um, but I really feel some of the adults involved in this process, um, and maybe now we have to be more stringent, um, and this is the only time this has ever happened, so maybe we learn from this, but me going forward, um, the banners that get presented to the select board, those should be the banners that we vote, you know, a subset of those they choose to put up on um, on Main, Mass Ave in Arlington. There were over 100 submissions. I told the town manager that I was aware that 20 were forwarded on. And the most controversial one, um, which the artist did a fantastic job, um, she's, you know, definitely has talent um, in terms of her uh, canvas and, and artwork there originally wasn't included. Uh, so I've asked the town manager to look into that um, and to really uh, firm this up and really make it clear from going forward that if you don't present it to a select board, you don't go out and choose it 
uh, send it to a lithograph or a printing company and put it up on, on the app. Because ultimately it's a select board's responsibility. And I know like my colleagues, but I can tell you, I have the, the tenor of uh, ferocity uh, against um, not just our police officers, men and women, but especially our police officers. I, I've been on details. I've been at red lights. I've um, walked uh, Mass Ave. And the increase of people beeping and you know, cussing and yelling, vile expletives against um, our police officers, women and men, has increased. And I think this particular banner, um, I don't know how, I mean, it's right on at the intersection where our police station is. It's a slap, it's similar to when the scabs um, uh, right across from the police station went up. I mean, we seem to be fostering an environment in Arlington that um, uh, really speaking poorly, unjustifiably so against our police officers is what you'll do because um, the town management, and I did say to the town manager, I hold him and, and the superintendent responsible for this, as well as the town manager on previous things. I mean, um, we're, we're, we have an officer nine weeks ago who made an arrest, drugs were confiscated. We followed the community's um, lead that, you know, if it's a low crime, you work with the individual versus being more punitive. And he's been, he shouldn't have been out for nine minutes. And, He's out nine weeks, um, and I'm I'm fearful we're sending a message to our police force. We don't value you. We we say up to your face, oh, you're the best. You're state of the art, national in the country. You're proactive. You're community policing, and then every time we turn around, we are not supporting them. When, in my opinion, um, ulterior motive claims, unfounded claims are made against them, and. If, if it's something that's serious that needs to be looked into, I, I, I'm for that. But what we're going to do is we're going to have all those um, exemplary um, officers who are counting the days to get out, counting the ways to get out. And guess what? Guess what kind of candidates Arlington's going to attract when they find out that the town of Arlington does not, does not support their police force. And um, I, I hold the town manager that. And I'm very upset about that. To the women and men who work at the Arlington Police Department, I, I all I do is apologize to you all the time. Um, I'm I certainly make my failings known. Um, I think if somebody there was a contest and we were discussing domestic violence, and the banner went up where you had a woman holding her newborn or child, you know, huddling in fear as her spouse or mate was about to hit her with a hammer, hammer or maybe not mace, but you know, go to choke around her neck people would cry foul because what that does is if I had a child who's 10 or under, um, they look up at that. They see, oh, there's an Arlington policeman looking aggressively that he's going to inflict harm or spray the face. And um, some people said, well, then this is an impetus to have a talk with your children, but it shouldn't come out of fear and it shouldn't come out of information because Arlington, Massachusetts Police Department does not operate that way. And I feel like defending them has become a large part of my job as a select board member, along with my colleagues, current and former, and I'll continue to do that. But I mean, at some point this has to stop. I mean, it, I feel like we're reacting and on police issues, taking a very small subset of a steering committee, about ha half of them who are very dangerous, divisive people who infiltrated, select board last year, infiltrated housing authority this year. I mean, I love Arlington. I'm embarrassed now. I'm afraid people aren't going to want to move here. They don't want to live here. You don't want to do business here. So um, I would like the town manager really to get to the bottom of this. And um, and I agree, I don't want to penalize any of the students, um, but I really felt like somebody or some bodies had some sort of motives, ulterior motives, because um, I know if I had seen that banner of you know the police officer maskless with a can of mace spraying it at a young African-American girl with a mask on, what Black Lives Matter t-shirt holding a megaphone and the police officer has his uh, ban uh, bayonet raised as to strike. I certainly would have said, well, I need, we need to have a conversation about this. We're, you know, do we need to do any community outreach first? Do we need to um, talk to the men, women of the department? 
is this, I mean, I really feel like the adults in the room weren't adults and um, I'm just disgusted and, and to the men and women of Arlington Police Department, your select board supports you. I'm disgusted by this. I've been drinking Pepto all day long. <laughs> After the meeting ends, it may be a different TO, but um, but I, I want this to stop. I want the town manager to stand up for all our town employees, you know, union and M schedule. Uh, and I just don't feel it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And, um, and just to follow briefly on, on Mr. Hurd's comments and, and Mrs. Mahan's comments, and, and uh, we all received a number of calls today and have a number of discussions and, and I will continue to have discussions tomorrow. The town manager and I will be talking uh, about this with, um, I believe a member of the commission for, for, for arts and culture and um, to, to, to try to receive more context on this and, and you know, to our police department, you know, how we feel locally about our police department is that they're, that they're second to none, but that they, this, it was an art competition and, and, and you know, um, it, the selection process took place outside of the select board. It was done uh, back in the January, February time period and we weren't aware of it. It was a contest that was announced last October by the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. But when they came before us in January, it was for approval to host a sign. So I, I, I think more discussion, um, is needed. I understand that the, the, the herd here, and, and, and I think, you know, we, as Mr. Hurd said, we look at this as an opportunity to, to find unity, not divisiveness. And, and uh, you know, it's going to require some difficult discussions, and, and, um, but I, I think we need to have those. So um, I, I will be following up with the manager on, on this tomorrow. Um, and I, I, this isn't the, um, and, and, and with that, I, that, that, that's all my new business tonight. So, so with that, I will take a, a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So motion by Mr. Hurd, second by Mr. Helmuth uh, to adjourn. Attorney Heim? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Unanimous vote? Good night, guys. Great. Meet me, Jordan. Thank you, everyone.